violence and other kind of violence. What's good, YouTube? It's a Black Gen Z mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, and let's get into the video. You know, people know them as squeegee boys, but the city of Baltimore is changing their name and launching a new employment opportunities to kind of get them off the street corners. And for the first time in two years, WMAR 2 News' Abby Isaacs is in our studio tonight to explain this to us. Abby. Well, Jamie and Kelly, with the Board of Estimates authorization today, the city enters into an agreement with a private company to help employ some of these teams. You say, wow. It's a question a lot of people ask. It's good money out here. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people think that we don't be doing too much, but we'd be out here we make a couple dollars. A couple dollars? Couple dollars. With the poo shiesty mask. I don't see why people are allowing this to just keep going on. But squeegee boys are getting a new name. The city now calling them disconnected youth. That's squeegee. Bruh, I'm telling you, if he just went to a job interview and pulled his damn pants up, he could probably get the job. I want to know why they call us disconnected. Like, what are we disconnected from? I don't know. <laughs> it was included in the mayor's administration's proposal for an agreement. I'll tell you what you're disconnected from. You're disconnected from reality. Okay? You're disconnected from reality. You've disconnected yourself from a job application. Okay? From hard work. Not just chilling on the corner, wiping people's windows down. Bro, you cannot convince me that there are not enough jobs in Baltimore for them to be able to occupy. Go work at Kroger, go work at Walmart, go work at the dollar store, be, become a police officer, do some, bruh. Like these dudes, you got some grown, <laughs> some of these dudes is grown, being still being called squeegee boys. No, you're a squeegee man. Agreement with Canopy Hilton Hotel in Harbor East to give disconnected youth that squeegee jobs in hospitality there. Two cohorts of 10 youth will be hired for a 13 week period and paid $15 an hour. They'll get three weeks of workforce training from the city as well as a mentor. We got a cash app and Venmo. Since the 1980s, Bal See, they cash, for, they asking for cash app and Venmo. Yeah, no, no thank you. Baltimore has grappled with persistent youth panhandling. Specifically, those that participate in freelance windshield washing at high traffic intersections. City officials say for the last few years, they've been working to develop a support model for disrupting environments that encourage squeegee activity. The latest effort, launching this employer coalition. The Canopy Hilton Hotel is the first of what they hope will be many partners to employ the teams. Squeegee boys like this young man, who goes by five, said he'd take the opportunity if it came, but he's not optimistic. A lot of five. Are you? I mean, that sounds like some gang stuff. Honestly, I don't want to get into the details, but if y'all know, if you know, you know. People say they're gonna do this and do that. I mean, there was a couple programs that 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 really came out and helped us out, and like it was like jobs for like the summertime. Others who interact with the teens all the time. They very respectful. Question the specificity of the program. I think it shouldn't be only for the squeezy boys. It should be for other young boys that's out here or need a job. And I think the city. Miss Cosby. <laughs> Miss Cosby, you need to get your granddaddy. Okay, you need to worry about your granddaddy, Cosby. You need to help everybody, not just them. The city has already hired eight of the first 10 youth. Now we have details on how you can get involved on our website. 744 here this morning. Outrage continues to grow after last week's deadly squeegee kid encounter downtown. 
We know the practice is technically illegal, but police do not attempt to clear the streets. And Mayor Brandon Scott has said that he does not plan to change the city's approach, despite calls from several city council members. This morning, Claudia Tolls, a former Baltimore business owner and Baltimore City Council candidate, joining us live with her plan to deal with this problem. Claudia, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. I think the question is, what needs to be done? Can something be done? Look, I think there have been calls to action finally from city council. It's, you know, refreshing to see that people are recognizing this for the problem that it is. It's not a simple solution, but we do have to stop making excuses. Just because it's complex doesn't mean we can't start approaching this problem, right? Some of the kids that are on the corners are just that, kids with lack of opportunity. There she goes, lack of opportunity, BS. There's plenty of jobs out here. I, I'm trying to figure out what they're talking about. You can go work at McDonald's. You can go work at Burger King. Do something. It, and I guarantee it's more money than being a squeegee boy if you're doing the squeegee boy thing illegally legal, right? Because <laughs> you're already not supposed to be doing the squeegee boy thing anyway. So it is illegal. But if you're following every other law and you're just squeegeeing, then a fast food gig is going to be more money than that. Okay. However, if you're doing more than just squeegeeing, like finessing people on a cash app or stealing a money or trying to get some from them, then there is more money in that. And I think that's the appeal. It's 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 you're acting as if you're a squeegee boy, but it's really street money in disguise. Trying to 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 make a buck and others are not. They're violent offenders. And we need to take this problem just as the Ruvig Naraja, who's running for state's attorney, has laid out for that what it is. We need to build resources and partnerships to get these kids into new pathways for jobs. They're not going to go directly in a normal kind of setting where they're ready to enter the workforce. We need to understand and recognize that and provide the resources in the So now they need special training. They need hand holding. Like what? How about they just apply for the application and act right? Just act right, bro. Act like you got some damn sense. Partnerships to get that done. And then we need to the law. We can't continue to say that we're not going to. We can't sugarcoat this or say that it's not big it's not big uh it's not going to create a bigger issue we've seen the escalation and it's only going to continue that's what i want to ask you claudia we know there is a maryland law that that prohibits this from happening do you think those kids should be taken off the streets? should police be going in and arresting them should there be warnings you know if you were to make it onto city council what would your position be on this well i would encourage a path forward that allows for these kids to find the opportunities, to have the opportunities of workforce development, of new pathways for jobs. They're not, again, gonna go directly from off the streets into a service job or into another job. We need to recognize that and partner with businesses. We can only do that if businesses buy in. If we're just re behaving and legislating that's not going to work what we need is real change from the top which is why it's so important this election is so important that we move forward with that kind of mindset city council the mayor the state's attorney they all have to work together instead of pointing fingers this is everyone's problem all right claudia thanks for for weighing in here this morning thank you for having me and the big story we're following at 5 o'clock, taking action. Should squeegee workers be forced from city corners? The debate and the latest on the search for the shooter after that deadly confrontation downtown. Mm. Hello, everybody. I'm Rick Ritter. And I'm Christina Mendez. Welcome to those of you watching on CBS News Baltimore and on WJZ TV. And the shocking violence unfolded four days ago right across in the Inner Harbor, right mm. near Camden Yards. And police still have provided little additional information. The reward, though, has now doubled to $16,000. Tonight, we're hearing from a man who witnessed this incident. And WJZ investigator Mike Helgren stays on the story from us. He's been on it since the very start. Live at Light and Conway with the follow-up. Mike. 
Rick Christina, the witness, says it happened very fast as he ducked for cover. Uh, today, again, there are no window washers at this corner, but there are plenty of police officers. Mm. Police remain at the corner of Light and Conway, but have yet to make an arrest in the killing of Tim Reynolds. Investigators say Reynolds parked his car last Thursday after an altercation with squeegee window washers. Wow, man. And he was probably done with them fools. He was probably fed up, like most people would be. I'm fed up with the water boys, and I'm in Atlanta. And it looks like it cost him his life. The super squeegee gremlins are on demon time. Coming toward them with a bat when one of them shot him. I mm. witnessed the dude getting shot, but I could never, I can't point out the guy who shot him. This eyewitness asked us not to show his face. I saw him come out the bat and then boom, 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 five blasts went off. Was he swinging the bat at anybody? I, I don't think he had enough time to swing the bat. According to an online. Right. That's so wrong, too. And he probably had all the right and all the reason to swing a bat at those super squeegee gremlins. You know they were provoking him. You know they was banging on his window because he didn't want them to squeegee his window. I mean, these dudes, they're just the worst, man. Online fundraiser for Reynolds' family that has raised more than $20,000. Tim was an engineer and the breadwinner for his household. He leaves behind three kids and his wife. She is currently both emotionally and financially devastated. Mm. I would just keep on driving, honestly. Um, yeah, but I'm, that's unfortunate that, that that had to happen to him. Yeah, very unfortunate. The young kids want to make money cleaning, you know, cleaning windows. We've learned there is some... No, that's not what it is. They want to make money by finessing people on the streets. That's literally it. Some video, but dispatchers had this to say about the city's cameras immediately after the incident. City Watch, we're uh, kind of blocked by trees. It can't be finger pointing. City Council member Zeke Cohen tells WJZ the city needs an all hands on deck approach. Should these squeegee window washers be off the corners? Should they even be there? Yep, boot them. Get rid of them. <laughs> Get rid of them. It's not legal anyway. We're a better city than that. And so I would say, no, we should. Wow. These glider liberals are going to, I mean, it's OV. After a man gets killed, you can't come out your mouth and say, yeah, keep him off the streets. We're doomed. Should not have children participating in this practice. When we talk about enforcement, which can be really controversial for this topic, for any topic, we don't necessarily just mean police. And I certainly don't want to see police officers spending their time arresting young people for squeegeeing. And Cohen says much more has to be done than what is being done right now. He has suggested using trusted mentors in combination with law enforcement to convince people to leave the corners. Live downtown, Mike Helgren, WJZ. I'm here on the corner of MLK and Frederick Douglass where a shooting just took place. And as you can see, it's a pretty rough area. So I'm basically risking my life reporting on this madness. So make sure you do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, like the video, hell, share the video, and make sure you go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section to continue the discussion on how we can find solutions to all this sun violence in the streets. I'm Jen Quavius Jackson, here live, reporting from Atlanta, Georgia, BGZM News 17. Going to tolerate acts of violence, regardless of who is committing them. And the big story at 5 o'clock tonight, the search for answers after a deadly encounter involving a squeegee worker near the Inner Harbor. Hello, everybody. I'm Rick Ritter. And I'm Denise Koch. Welcome to those of you watching on CBS News Baltimore and on WJZ-TV. And as we come on the air, the shooter remains on the loose and many on edge tonight after that violent confrontation a little more than 24 hours ago. City officials and the family of the man who died are among those reacting tonight. This is the story everyone is talking about. WJZ has live team coverage with Avajoy Burnett and investigator Mike Helgren. So let's start with Mike at Light and Conway, where that unfolded yesterday. Mike. 
Denise Rick, right across the street from the Inner Harbor. And we don't see any squeegee workers here today, although we've seen them at other intersections across the city and talked to several of them. What there is here today is a police presence. There because they know that part is hot now. So <clears throat> if they weren't out here trying to commit crimes, then, and they know who did this, then they would come back because they're not doing anything wrong, right? Right. There's been police cars here throughout the day at this intersection. Number two male with a bag was threatening the squeegee you kids. Are we getting discharged and at the same location? Baltimore is in shock after the violent encounter at the busy intersection. Did you hear how they described that? He was threatening the squeegee kid. Come on. That's the best y'all got. Of light in Conway, where police say a squeegee window washer shot and killed 48 year old Timothy Reynolds after they say Reynolds confronted squeegee workers with this bat. Ron tells WJZ he knows and sometimes washes windows with the group of squeegee workers involved. He was all aggressive. He got on his car with a bat. So he, he swung it at everybody. So what, what did y'all do to him? What did y'all do to his car? The people are waiting to hear. Police are a visible presence today at many corners where young men wash windows for money. The man, he shouldn't have hopped out with a bat. Him, he shouldn't have hopped out with a bat. He shouldn't have hopped out with the back. No accountability. How about that guy shouldn't have shot him and killed him? <laughs> you got to be kidding me. At light in Conway, though, squeegee workers are nowhere to be found. Windshield wiper parts are still on the ground here. How often are they out here usually? I would say just about every day, if not. Are you surprised not to see him today? Yes. There have been several tributes to Reynolds online. The commissioner was unable to provide additional details about how the confrontation unfolded. There was some type of uh, engagement that escalated to confrontation. And from there, the victim drove through the intersection, parked, and returned with the baseball bat. A relative of Reynolds declined to speak on camera, but told us he was a good man and a father, and said the family is in shock and mourning. He asked for privacy. Mayor Brandon Scott. We're going to continue to have a increased, and I'm highlight that word, increased presence of city officials, African American male engagement, mm. DPD, and otherwise uh, to keep uh, those corners and everyone there and motorists safe. There were several incidents involving squeegee window washers reported at the same intersection in the hours before Reynolds was killed. This mm. was just, uh, you know, the pinnacle of uh, the, the problem right in downtown across from Inner Harbor with somebody getting shot. And today city officials declined to say whether they would force squeegee window washers from intersections that say they're looking for a pathway to get them off of the corners. And we told you about some prior incidents here yesterday. Our live team coverage continues with Abajoy Burnett. She's at City Hall. She talked to someone involved with one of those and has much more tonight. Abajoy. Hi, Mike. Well, we spoke with a driver who's uh, voicing some frustration about the squeegee workers here in the city of Baltimore. And if you've driven through the city, you've probably had an encounter with some of these workers at intersections. Not all bad encounters, by the way, but for this particular driver, he... Why are they calling them workers as if to legitimize them? It's crazy. He said he came face to face with some of these workers at that exact location yesterday, just hours before that deadly shooting. Yesterday around 1.15, 1.30 p.m., I was uh, heading down Conway, and that's when I spotted the squeegee kids or squeegee men. I stopped my vehicle about 30 feet before I got to them. There were three of them. They proceeded, when the light changed green, to come towards my vehicle and block me so I couldn't go anywhere. Mm. This driver, who asked us not to reveal his name, said at that moment, one of the squeegee workers ripped off his windshield wiper and tossed it. So at this point, I've had enough. I get out of my vehicle, just like I did the time before. Wow. See, and that's what they said. They said uh, the windshield wiper was on the ground. So obviously, the squeegee boys... We're antagonizing people. Mm, 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 mm. And I said, what is your problem? So I guess he thought that I was going to come towards him 
and he reached down and picked the backpack up that was at his feet, took his left hand, placed it inside the backpack, and brandished a weapon, which to me looked like a gun. I got wow. my car at that point and left. Would you think twice next time about ever getting out? I would, but at the same time, when you get fed up enough, something, I don't want to say snaps, but something comes over you and yeah see people are getting tired of this mess and when there is backlash which there's gonna be there already is it's going to be labeled as racism i'm gonna tell you guys right now and, and you just can't take it anymore he told us he knows not all squeegee workers have a bad rep and what the hell look at his pants and some are just trying when you get fed up enough Something, I don't want to say snaps, but something comes over you and, and you just can't take it anymore. He told Look at this dude's pants, sagging like a mug. These super sagging gremlins are on demon time. Told us he knows not all squeegee workers have a bad rep and some are just trying to make some money. Friday, a division of Mayor Scott's administration held a job fair for young people in the city. We met Talon, a former squeegee worker, and with the city's help, he's now working in another field. So you decided to make the change around what time? How old were you when he decided to make the change? When I had my son. We also spoke with Davion. He works at a hotel now, and he's about to graduate with a trade in welding this summer. We heard about what happened yesterday. What went through your mind? It could have been de-escalated or whatever it was. I don't know the situation. I just know the result of what happened. I saw it, so mm -hmm. I'm just not surprised. Now, the Mayor's Office of African American Male Engagement, they organized that job fair from earlier today, and they told us this job fair was organized a long time before what happened yesterday. They told us about 20 people came in today. They have conditional job offers, and some of those folks actually went back outside, grabbed some of their friends to bring them inside so that they, too, could apply for jobs. Live tonight at City Hall, Ava Joy Burnett for WJZ. Here at Conway and Light Streets and other locations where squeegee workers operate, Baltimore police are increasing their presence and patrols. Enhanced enforcement following Thursday's deadly fight between a motorist and squeegee worker. We're combing through a lot of evidence right now in search of the person who shot the victim. Police say 48-year-old Timothy Reynolds confronted a group of squeegee workers. He got out of his car and started swinging a baseball bat. Mm. A squeegee worker pulled out a gun and shot him. The shooting, one of several incidents at the same intersection Thursday. And once again, the mayor's office had an entire team out there with outreach yesterday at that corner. And before that, we were right there making an arrest of a person with a gun. It's horrendous. This man who doesn't want us to show his face says prior to the shooting, he came through the same area. While working DoorDash, he got angry when a squeegee worker broke his windshield wiper. He is also frustrated over past incidents at the same corner. Mm. The driver got out of his car, but quickly changed his mind about a confrontation. He reached down, picked up a backpack with his right hand, took his left hand and put his hand in the backpack, pulled the gun out to where I could see it. And at that point I was leaving. You know, I had this emotion that overcame me. It was kind of like fight or flight. Like I wanted to go at him, but then I had this overwhelming sense of my family and needing to get back to them. Yep, and that is the only thing saving a lot of these super squeegee gremlins on demon time. Because one day these folks going to boss up on you, and it ain't going to be pretty, okay? It ain't. And that's why I got in that car and left. Mayor Brandon Scott says the city has been trying to address the squeegee issue, hoping to connect and get the workers off the streets. At the Reginald F. Lewis Museum Friday, a job readiness program offered resources, job interviews, and free haircuts. The city is also offering 40 government jobs. I want you to take advantage of every resource that we are offering you to get off of those corners. Um, you know, nice try, but most aren't. I, I told you they just don't want to work. That's the reality. There's plenty of jobs, plenty of opportunities, plenty of programs, but they're programmed to do this you know, finesse. At Martin Luther King Jr. and Washington Boulevards, we did see squeegee workers on duty, but none of them wanted to talk. There are some of these young men that are very nice young men, and sure. I've had conversations with them. I've given them waters. They've given me waters. We've talked. There's a lot of people out there that are doing good, but are just in bad situations. Okay. 
And once again, we have uh, Episcopal ministers and uh, members of the Episcopal Church who are here. They are actually uh, some walking across the street right now. Uh, they are here for a convention, but they're also here for a prayer service uh, here um, at Light and Conway Street, um, dealing with uh, the this is the incident that happened here uh, with the squeegee worker and uh, with the driver. Now, police say that they're going to arrest anyone committing crimes like assaulting motorists and damaging vehicles. Um, but there are drivers who also say that when they have tried to complain, it has taken an hour or more for the police to get to the scene. And also, they say when officers arrive, officers have told them there's not much that they can do. Hmm. Reporting live from downtown Baltimore, Barry Sims, WBAL TV, 11 News. Gang violence and other kind of violence. So it is what it is.